Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to answer some questions you guys asked on my previous video, which is the KVM over IP. So let's get started. Now, if you guys haven't watched that video, I'm going to leave a card right over here and on down in the description below so you guys know what we're talking about. So basically, the previous project that I just performed was the KVM over IP, which allows you to remotely connect to a computer via console or locally, like you're sitting in front of it. Now, you might be thinking, hey, I could do this with VNC or some other software. But what you can't do is this. Watch, if I go over to the power button, restart the computer, and now it's physically going to go into the boot and I could hit delete a couple of times and I'm in the BIOS. Now, a couple of the questions that you guys asked was one, can you use VGA on it? Now, the connector that we have on the actual Raspberry Pi, which is the HDMI to CSI2, while that is HDMI connection, you could always buy a VGA connector con to convert it from HDMI to VGA. Now, I do have some connectors over here that are similar to what we are talking about, but it is not the connector that we need, which I will leave a link down in the description below for. So yes, it is possible to do it. You just need to buy like a $7 connector just to get to achieve that. Now, the second question you guys were asking, which is multi-port, can this be more than one device? And the answer is yes. It is achievable by using a separate device, which is already a KVM switch, but it doesn't have the IP functions. You can't do it over the network, but you are actually able to utilize that in two ways. One, if it's some normal KVM switch that requires a switch that you have to press, then you could use GPIO to actually trigger that switch. You do have to take it apart and stuff just to get through. But the second way, which is an easier way, is to use EZCO KVM switch because that is actually switchable via USB. Basically, you could plug in the USB and the Raspberry Pi could control the USB and tell it to trigger to whatever screen it needs to, and it's up to four screens. Now, you could get a KVM switch that's 10 screens or whatever it is, as long as there's a way to switch it through like a GPIO pin or through USB, you'll be able to achieve it. Now I'm gonna pop over to this GitHub to show you guys what I'm talking about. Now in this GitHub, I would definitely check it out. Up here, there's this one folder called pages. And in here, there are multiple things that you could go through to see what it supports, like IPMI, GPIOs, and this is what I was talking about, the EZCO. Now, if you go over to multiport, they do have the function, like I said, EZCO, uh, KVM switch, or the, using via Raspberry Pi GPIO. Now, if I go click on this one, which is the EZCO KVM switch, you're gonna see that he actually has a override for it. What I mean by override is that there's a config file called ETC KVMD and then override YML. And that file will actually allow you to adjust settings inside the environment so you could you know, switch screens to one, two, three, whatever screens it is. So he already has a script out and this is the actual switch itself which is the four port EZCO controllable via USB, which is a pretty decent price. If you're thinking about it, you get basically four HDMI inputs as well as uh, KVM over IP. Now, moving on, again, if you check out this page, you're gonna see a lot of stuff over here, and the, which leads me to the third thing that we're talking about, which is VPN. Now, you guys were asking if you could do a VPN so you could actually reach the computer over the internet. Now, he does have something set up for tail scale. Now, this is basically like the VPN that you're gonna be working, but instead, it actually has an IP address that you could just connect to. Uh, well, it's a URL through the browser, and you'll be able to connect to your KVM switch without having to open all the ports that you need and stuff like that. So. He does have a solution and he also has like a little thing set up that you could do it right off the Raspberry Pi image that he has. And then if you're looking down a couple of this stuff, there's a lot of things to look at. If you wanna interface by, via Bluetooth, you can. You could use Arduino like we were saying on the previous video. If you had a Raspberry Pi 3 and you wanted to use the Arduino as a, a keyboard and mouse, you can. He has it set up over here. Uh, EDIDs for monitor settings, mouse ports to make it uh, respond differently. So there's actually ways to make it run a little bit faster by enabling relative mouse movements on here. And this is something you could set up, but it will disable the VNC if you're planning to use VNC off the board. So while it gives you a faster mouse input and output, it does have that drawback of not being able to use the VNC. Then uh, basically, yeah, if you have a chance, go through all this and see if you're interested in setting anything up. And it basically expands how much you could use this uh, Pi KVM. 
Now, next up I have on the list is audio. You guys were asking if audio could be passed through. Now, I did talk to the developer and that is coming. So it will have audio support through HDMI in the future. So that's not something that we're gonna say it's not gonna be impossible. It is coming on his board. He's actually gonna be working on it. Now, talking about the board, he will have the prototypes in about three weeks from now. So I will be able to play with it and test it when it comes in. But for actual production wise, uh, for sale, and if you're doing pre-orders, uh, I was told that it might be up to January where he could start fulfilling a lot of your orders. But he will be getting some out in the next couple of weeks if you do have early pre-orders. Now, as far as the price goes, I don't know. I really honestly do not know. He's trying to make it as cheap as possible, but the prototype is the prototype. You can't base the price off the prototype because he's using parts on it that might not see it till the production type. So we're, I'm, I'm not going to really quote him on that or anything as far as the price. But if you do want to know, uh, I pop over to his Discord, maybe ask him himself. Maybe he's got a better price probably in the next coming weeks. Now, last but not least, uh, the USB connection that you guys were asking. I honestly thought it was um, a no-brainer because to me, I use Raspberry Pi 4 so much that I know that the USB-C is the on-the-go cable. But to connect it to the Raspberry Pi, you need a USB-C to connect to the back port where the power is. Plugging the power on one end and the other end is the connection to the actual device like your computer or something like that. So that's the only port that you really will be using. As far as the HDMI goes, plugging it into the USB 2.0 port works right away and you still get the 30 frames per second because that's the, that's the delay about it. So there's nothing you can do about it. Still works pretty well. And as far as the HDMI CSI, you plug it into the camera port zero on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, as far as the bonus goes, uh, I did test this on the CM4 and I was running into issues. Now the CM4 supposedly has four lanes on cam one. So it's able to actually achieve up to 1080 60 frames per second compared to our cam zero on the raspberry pi 4 which is only 1080 30 frames per second now the extra two lanes will provide that speed but here's the downside the hdmi csi that we are currently using only have two lanes so even if there is four lanes on the board that allows you to travel the camera module that we have only has two lanes so i am looking into seeing if they have something available for four lanes but as of right now um, we're stuck with using 1080 30 frames or in our case after the conversion and everything it's 1080 by 25 frames anyway I hope I answer all the questions that you guys had on this um, I just saw a lot of multiple questions and I was answering them one by one but hopefully this gathers all the questions that you guys were wondering and gives you an idea where to search for all the stuff and hopefully answers all the questions that you guys had anyway I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you guys did, please hit that like button. If you guys have any more questions about the Pi KVM, let me know down in the comments below and let me know what you want to see tested because when I get the board, I'm gonna take all these collections and try to do everything else. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing, also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.